Tiktalik Rosé, a personal essay. Tiktalik Rosé, the scientific name given to a species documented in the journal Nature in 2006, is one often heard in the ongoing evolution-creationism debate. Most recently, Bill Nye used Tiktalik as an example of evolution's predictive capability in a debate with Ken Ham in early February. Perhaps the reason it is so popular is because it almost perfectly demonstrates a transitional form, that being a creature that displays features of two recognisable groups of animals and is thought to have been a common link between them through common ancestry or as a link between two groups that emerged one after another. One of the most common creationist counter-arguments to the theory of evolution that you will hear usually goes as follows. The fossil record does not support the theory of evolution because there are no transitional forms. That is, an intermediate between two groups of animals, i.e. dinosaurs to birds, fish to amphibians, ancient apes to humans. This is why Tiktaalik is so often used in evolution creationism debates. It fits the definition of transitional forms so well, for reasons I will go into. Firstly, some basic information on the species. Tiktaalik rosé fossils were discovered in 2004 in Ellesmere Island, Canada, close to Greenland by three scientists, Edward Deichler, Neil Shubin and Faris Jenkins Jr. They discovered the Tiktaalik remains after several years of searching, and in fact just before throwing in the towel. They had predicted beforehand that fossils of this nature would appear in the Devonian rocks exposed in Ellesmere Island, and they were actually searching for a missing link between fish and amphibians. Of course, the Devonian Epoch, approximately 416 to 359 million years ago, is when tetrapods were thought to have arisen, some of the first known tetrapods being creatures such as Ichthyostega and Acanthostega, that lived about 360 million years ago, and that could walk on land with small, still-developing limbs. True terrestrial life, however, didn't really take off until the Carboniferous Epoch, as far as we know. Before that, the closest relatives to tetrapods in the Devonian epoch are the lobe-finned fish, the Sarcopterygians. Believe it or not, all tetrapods are classified as lobe-finned fish because our ancestors are such. More on that later. Tiktaalik is estimated to have lived approximately 380 million years ago in the Frasnian stage of the Devonian epoch, just before the arrival of true terrestrial life. It was an aquatic species, but it also had features that would have allowed it to move in shallow water and even on land. Features that distinguish the species from fish, though, includes a set of bones in the fins that can be seen as ancestral to wrists and fingers of modern tetrapods. Sparacles on top of the head, indicative of a primitive lung structure, and even a neck, a feature exclusive to tetrapods. In short, Tiktaalik was a fish with features originally found only on tetrapods. One could safely suggest, then, that Tiktaalik is a fine example of a transitional form. The discovery of Tiktaalik is a great example of the predictive power of evolution, hence why Bolna utilised the case in the debate with Ken Ham. This, however, begs the question, why do creationists, despite the knowledge of Tiktaalik's existence, still insist that the lack of transitional forms is an issue for the theory of evolution. Does it not count as a transitional form? One of the more common criticisms of Tiktaalik as evidence for the transition of fish to tetrapods goes thusly. It's still a fish. This is not an uncommon argument and has been applied to many different cases. Yes, that dog may have been bred to look far different from that other dog, but it's still a dog. Example. In the Ken Ham-Bill Nye debate, Ken Ham introduced a definition of kinds that put all canid species under one title. The claim is that all modern canids, from jackals, wolves, foxes, to dogs and more, came from a pair of ancestors that rode on Noah's Ark all those years ago. Yes, they will say, all modern canids, including foxes, wolves, jackals, coyotes and dogs, all came from a single pair. They are all still dogs, though so this is not evolution. So, in short, creationists claim that Tiktaalik is not a transitional form because it is still a fish. There are other arguments, but none, I think, quite as common as this one. So how do I explain this? Yes, Tiktaalik is a fish. 
However, the creationist statement displays ignorance as to how taxonomy functions. A species will always be classified in the same group as its ancestors, the same way as a twig on the tips of a tree is still part of the original trunk. They never switch branches. Anyway, the name fish is not a valid taxonomic rank, and is simply a name given to certain organisms displaying sim similar characteristics, not based on evolutionary relationship. It is paraphyletic. Similarly, the title reptile applies to a paraphyletic group of organisms including snakes, lizards, crocodiles, etc., but excluding birds and mammals. It does not form a true clade. If indeed reptile was a valid taxonomic rank, we ourselves would be classified as reptiles, as would all other mammals and birds. The same applies to fish. However, for this case, let's use fish as if it were a valid taxonomic title. That would mean that every descendant of the first fish would themselves be fish, no matter how much they changed. In the same way, we will always be under the domain eukarya. We will always be chordates. We will always be mammals. If fish were a true taxonomic title, and we were indeed descended from fish, as we are, then we would still be fish. Does that mean that when a creationist hears that humans descended from fish over 300 million years ago, they can dismiss it by simply saying that humans are still fish? Did we not evolve from lamprey-like predecessors, jawless fish, because we are still chordates? This relates to the way that creationists look at taxonomy. They talk not in terms of classes, orders, families, genera or species, but in terms of kinds. Kinds, as defined by Ken Ham, are an extremely vague classification with no definite boundaries and encompass groups that are scientifically classified as disparately a species or order. No solid definition has ever been given, and all we have been given is a number of simple examples, i.e. the dog kind and the cat kind. These are examples easy enough to perhaps get away with, though I addressed this problem in my previous video, Ken Ham Defines Kinds. This vagueness brings up an issue for the creationist. Where does Tiktaalik fit into the creation orchard that the creationists theorise? If they say that Tiktaalik is a fish, then does it sit somewhere within the fish kind, or one of the smaller theorised fish kinds, assuming they split fish into more specific sub-kinds? Did the fish kind diverge so rapidly and so varyingly that within a 4,000 year period a fish with wrist and finger bones emerged from ray-fin fish and then subsequently died out? If it did, then what fish kind did it emerge from? If not a fish kind, and Tiktaalik falls within its own unique tree within the creation orchard, then the Tiktaalik is still a fish argument is useless. In fact, kinds as a hypothesis is extremely difficult to consider reasonably when taking into consideration the huge number of extinct animals that display such great variance in relation to modern animals. Where does Ichthyostega fit into the creation orchard? What about Morganucodon, a mammal displaying a clear transition between reptilian and mammal features, including the precursor to mammalian ear structure? Where do they fit? How many kinds were there? And when that question is answered, how did they diverge and then die out in such a dramatic fashion in under 5,000 years? We did find a transitional form in Tiktaalik. It is half fish and half amphibian exactly what creationists have demanded, yet they don't accept it for whatever reason. They come up with an excuse, or shift the goalposts, claim that Tiktaalik's discovery just creates more gaps in the fossil record, ignoring other species such as Acanthostega or Ichthyostega. Not only Tiktaalik, but this is the case for so many other transitional species. We have these transitional species. This is not in dispute, no matter how much some will want to say otherwise. Tiktaalik is rightly an icon, being such a fascinating and wonderfully telling specimen, and its discovery will likely go down in history, with great thanks to the dedicated workers who put time and effort into its finding. Hi right, guys, just before you go, I have a new album out. Well, not technically new, I wrote it in 2011, but I've just released it. Um, it's my 2011 album dedicated to science, rather appropriately named. Uh, and it's available right now to download for free. 
uh, I'll just give you the link below. And uh, thanks again for listening, and hopefully talk soon.